So Carla, why are you here today? I'm here for a phrenectomy. Um, I need it because I'm having a lot of neck pain, eye socket pain, face pain everywhere. And it's hard for me to sometimes chew or do some movements with my tongue. How long have you had it? What's the history of it? Well, I always had it as a child. I used to have a stiff neck every week since I was very little. And I always was a problem. I could never blow a balloon. It always gave me pain here by the jaw. Okay. Um, as long as I remember. Got it. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Guys, so what are we hoping to achieve today? Today we're hoping to achieve complete um, resolution of any intraoral, labial, lingual restrictions that might be restricting the maxilla, the palate, the jaw, the occiput, the back of the neck, and any of the anterior cervical fascia that goes in through the chest. Um, what I've been experiencing and noticing is that these tongue ties aren't limited to the mouth. And especially when we include the lips, we have a fascial restriction that seems to blend all the way down into the thoracic spine and sometimes even lower. It's a very intricate process. There's lots of little fibers that will hide in the soft tissues that become very significant. And through our experience after releasing these small fibers, people have tremendous results where shoulders are dropping or they can breathe better or all of a sudden they can you know, pass air through their nose. So, when you look under the tongue or you look under the lip, uh, the lip, sometimes it's very obvious that there's a nice fibrous piece of tissue there. Um, but what we're doing today is using the palpatory um, expertise or guidance of an osteopath um, who's trained in assessing the soft tissues and myofascial strains um, to really target in on areas that are interconnected to restrictions in the mouth. So Dr. Kendall is gonna be using a probe inside the mouth um, to find or touch a a uh, tight place or an area where there might be a tension band and I'm going to be using my osteopathic um, examination and palpatory skills to say yes there's a connection between the occiput or yes that's significant or not so it helps us to narrow down what we shouldn't cut and what we should so it makes it a more effective more complete procedure but at the same time we don't cut anything more than we have to. This young girl came in and she said well you're going to do the lip too and the problem with her is that her lips it up and she would smile and she had a really gummy smile and she's like oh, I want that to go away and I said well it's because your lip tied when she came in and she said well let's do the lip as well and we looked at each other and we're like okay let's see let's see mm -hmm. um, why not <laughs> and uh, I had my hands around the person's shoulders you know as soon as that revision was done and the lower lip tie released it was almost like this superficial opening up of, we call it platysma. So that muscle there, just, it released, it dropped, and the whole front of the shoulder girl just relaxed. And so we find that the lip goes all throughout, down into the clavicles, that the maxillary ties wrap around and seem to go more into the condyles and where the head meets the neck. And then the tongue has this almost like tube-like release that goes down through the anterior cervical fascia. It starts to lift the diaphragm, it starts to open up the chest wall, um, but also the tongue really does help to drop the shoulders. And it's often like you, you clip something on the left side, the left shoulder drops, you clip something on the right side, the right shoulder drops. Um, but, so it's, it's been an evolution and a, wow, we're getting better results the more complete we go and the more complete we are so um, noting that there's no insignificant tie if there's a tie there and we're releasing them why not release what's there free up the tissue uh, small things matter see how your shoulders just want to pop up mm -hmm. so we're going to look for that to be gone we're going to look for all of this that we're going to find in the, probably in the right base of the tongue. So since you've done the work, the myofunctional work, mm -hmm. um, obviously you're not done. Um, and what I say, and I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again, mm -hmm. I want you to be fanatical about it. Yeah. I want you to do it all the time. He's an excellent cheerleader for that. But 
really you do it at home. So okay. you are, you are the most responsible person. Okay. okay. And you don't stop until there's nothing to do. And okay. that may be three months. Okay. You don't have to be as fanatical three months from now. Mm -hmm. But it's something where you've been your whole life with this. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to want is to not go back. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go back to that tightness. Mm -hmm. What you felt like Ooh. yesterday and today mm -hmm. should feel different how you feel this afternoon and tomorrow. You want to keep that. Okay. So we've got tongue mm -hmm. exercises. It's just as important to be doing doorway stretches, okay. keeping the shoulders open, hanging over yoga balls, breathing in deep stretching your hamstrings. It's, this is a body event. Okay. So if you're only here, but you're sitting there doing tongue exercises, we're missing the point. Mm -hmm. This is a restriction that goes all the way down into here. So this is where you want to be. You want to be keeping your shoulders open. You want them to stay down. And it's nice because you can watch your body to see is the restriction creeping back up. Where you might go, oh, this left shoulder feels great, and that right shoulder's creeping back up. You, you want your body's going to give you clues. So it's an observation. It's awareness. Okay. And, and don't put all the, the microscope here. The microscope. You got the wrong. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Everything is the whole body. Everything. We're ready. So this one is pretty obvious. So what I would do is I would ask when I go like this. Yes? Okay. And where does this go? Into the occiput. Into the occiput, okay. I'm feeling an instant change in the occiput. Okay. I think I'm done, you tell me. I can do a little more like that. Can you poke? No. Uh, We're done, right? Maybe? I can put a little gel on this way. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, what about. So I think we're down on top. Lower. So then I will check this one. What does this one tell you? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this one? This one tells you. I'm be able to find it. I just saw it, but it then disappeared right there. It's imperceptible, but anything? Does something. Uh, it seems to go down to the lower part of the neck and sort of a thoracic tension. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this one? Or that one? Uh, oh. hmm? You can feel that? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get it numb, but I'm just wondering since I'm looking at it. What about this one? That's the same one. Okay. And this one? No, this one's not one. Okay. Alright. So, and there's one right, where did I see it? So, one and two. And way more significant. Way more significant, yeah. So, are you. This one, right? Yeah. SBF? No. Uh, Cranial C1 to Uh-huh. C1 to okay. okay, so I think we'll put the... Um, I just want to see something. So... 
So what I would do is I would go, I would take the lip and I would go left to right. So what about this thing right there? No? I mean, it's, 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 it's not something to write home about. It's not something to write home about. Okay, what about this right here? No. So even though, even though it feels like something, it doesn't reverberate as a restriction. There is a connection there. There is definitely a little connection, but I'm seeing the head and the neck so good right now mm -hmm. um, that I wonder about risk benefit. Is it gonna right? Okay, so we can leave it alone. And if we ever need to come back, we can always come back. Okay. And on this side, I don't see anything. She went from completely locked to to release. Mobile and fluid. I mm -hmm. can translate C1 back and forth nice and easy. If there's anything, will you go back to that right side one more time? Let me find it again. Right there. So, I've got my hands right on a, a muscle that's tight, and that goes right to that muscle. Okay. So what do you think? I would say that's very significant. Significant? Yeah. So I don't know if you can tell how it, it's hidden and it looks like fatty tissue, but it's a band and it appears to be a flat band. And, and when I need to talk, it, 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 um, a line pops out. So I'm going to get you now here. So I'm going to get you just putting the probe there, going mm -hmm. back and forth over that, started mm -hmm. to move this muscle. Okay. So that even more. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, you know, it's, it's interesting. When you get into C1 and C2, they they fan out. They go up into the temporal bone, and then you know there's so much that goes from the temporal bone over into the jaw. So how much is this whole jaw pain my whole life, all of the soft tissue that's in there. And yeah, we're gonna release this and get the neck pain, but what about the jaw? There's so that much done. TMJ here. Okay, so where were we? There, we were there. Okay. It's okay with you? What else did we want to do? One over what there. What about this thing right the there? The size was there. Here I go. Is that good? Right there. Boom. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. What did you feel? Um, the high wave actually just started to move a little bit better. Okay. Alright. So, we are done there. So, here I go. Okay. Let's go up. Up. 
Up and away. That was an interesting review. Now we're getting down. At top was at like C4. Mm -hmm. Now you're at like C6, C7. Here goes C7. Okay, go up. Don't get laid down us now. Go up to the top. Yep, 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 yep. To the top. Not, not back, but up. Up, 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 up. Okay. So now you're moving back and forth. Your shoulders are dropping. Left hands. Whatever the last like, three that you did were, were all C17-1. They were all exactly where she needed. So this feels like night and day difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't even translate her up towards the ceiling, and now she's got a lot of compliance in there. Mm -hmm. First rib is released from T1. I mean, these shoulders, I can push them down and they're not in this like recoil where they snap back up. Mm -hmm. um, let's see the neck. You know, the interesting thing is the, the arch. So she had the arch in, she's had, you know, a week of not being able to have um, proper swallowing, biting, and all that. Um, there was a little bit of irritation there from the arch. So, what I'm seeing, ooh, that's actually really. It doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt anymore? It always hurt my life. They thought it didn't hurt. Lucy, what do you think? No? Okay. Alright. So then, we're good? Mm -hmm. Suck it up again. Do, do the cave. I just want to see. Swallow first. Sorry. Close and swallow. And suck it up. And open wide. Make a cave in the palate. In the palate. Okay. Alright. So, we're good? Um, so Carla, it's been a month and a half since we did a phrenectomy, mm -hmm. and um, if I remember correctly, you've had pain since you were a child. Yes. So tell me, how are you doing? Uh, in this m month and a half that it has passed, I have improved, I would say, 90%. I have no pain on my neck. I can more flexible with my tongue. I actually can open my mouth wider. And I find that um, I can actually, um, when I'm like moving my, my, my neck or my face, I don't feel the tightness in my mouth or soreness on my cheeks. So it has improved a lot, which I feel very pleased about. Beautiful, thank you so much.